Hi guys, this is Jay again, bringing you another lever review. This time it's gonna be the Core Jam V2, and let's get into it. So this is what it looks like out of the box. Uh, this is the underside, it looks very reminiscent of a Fujin V3 because of the switch plate. Armor switches, obviously. Here's the body, looks very nice to be honest. Plate is kind of weird, but is polished nonetheless. Subtle white bat top, black shaft, generally a good looking lever. So this is the core jam lever once I disassembled it. As you can see, there's two sets of shafts and actuators, which I'll get into later. That's the E-clip, the cover, the bat top, and the lever itself with the core jam signature. So we're about to open up this lever just so we can see the insides of it and we can let uh, I can show you how it gets a lot more tension from a 25 it's kind of something like the Sanjuk wherein the body is designed to squeeze the grommet to get more out of the 25 and I'll show you uh, after I disassemble it so as you can see uh, the top part of the lever has a plastic indent that pushes down on the grommet once it's fastened so it gets more tension out of it um, it is the core seems to be custom i don't think this is uh, the same as the dx crown core so this is another uh unique thing to this lever so this is the underside as you can see this lever supports a switch plate to help keep the switches uh, in place the switches are Omrons that are modified by Korjam himself. Not sure what he did, but they do feel quite different than the ones you can get from IST. So this is the extra shaft you can get from Core Jam. This is an 8mm shaft with a 14.7 actuator. You can actually mix and match this. They, they are all fully compatible. Uh, the ones that are on the stock is the 9 9mm shaft and the 14.5mm actuator. Issues I've run into so far. If you look at the bat top, Underneath there is some dirt there, but those are actually residuals of the acetyl material and the shaft Which at first isn't a problem But the main problem here is that there is no that metal screw screwy thing Like what you get when you have a sandwala bat top you screw it in there. That's the threading, right? This doesn't have it. So you can just screw in until you You break the fucking thing and you can't actually do anything about it so you really have to be careful with this. Uh, another thing is that the shaft actually has a rough part uh, right where the actuator slides in. And I tried this like scratching that part with my nail. It, my nail actually caught a few times, which is concerning because the actuator is plastic. So there might be some issues with how long you play with this that it might just destroy the actuator because of the constant friction between the plastic and the metal. So the plates are actually pretty sharp. Uh, the main plate and the switch plate. So when I was handling this, opening it up, I actually got cut like a few times on my thumb, which wasn't that deep, but it is concerning for, you know, other people. Uh, hopefully no one has had the same issue, but just be mindful of that once you buy one. I'm about to show off gameplay clips, but sorry guys, this time around there will be no hand cam since my PC can't handle my new hardware. I've recently upgraded my camera and my PC can't actually uh, render it. I can't actually sync the gameplay and the hand cam because it's too high res and it's 60 FPS. 
So I'll downgrade my camera again next time. But for now, I'll just show off a few of the combos. And so back dashing, wave dashing, uh, doing slides and shit uh, for now. So I took this lever to a local tournament a few months back. I actually had my own station where people could play on the Korjam V2 lever and the new Help Me lever. If you want a video on that, let me know. Uh, so essentially people could play on it for a few games after a while they tell me their opinions about it and pretty much everyone said that they were surprised that it was just a 25 after playing on it because they felt that it was like a 35 or a 40 and another thing is that people were kind of having trouble with the uh, HCB motions but particularly for geese players who were doing two forward one Jakens because they can't like Every time they would do it, it would come out because they actually aren't bottoming out the lever because they're probably used to like the thicker 9mm one which is I guess a thing to keep in mind if you're just transitioning. Uh, there will be extra throw so you know it will depend on you if you're into that or not but it's definitely adaptable. So my friend Mikopi actually bought a Core Jam V2 lever as well and here are some of his thoughts after playing on it. Okay, so the core drum lever. First thing you'll notice about this lever is its build quality. It is heavier and a lot sturdier than your typical Korean lever. Mine came in with two sets of shafts and actuators. One is for a longer throw that's reminiscent of your Myeongshin Fantas. The other one is for a shorter throw that is similar to your Crown 309 MJ. Two of the interesting choices for the core drum lever are its switches and the use of a 25 tension grommet. I think these things are chosen by design. The core drum lever is built to be light with a constant level of resistance no matter how far you pull it. As for Tekken 7 applications, I like it for the basic characters and characters with quarter circle and half circle motions. For Mishima users, however, I would still recommend looking for other options such as the Crown 303 Crazy Dongpao. Overall, I like the core drum lever and I'd like to thank Adriel and Jake and Arcade Shop for introducing me to this premium handcrafted Korean lever. Okay, so my personal thoughts on the lever. I absolutely love the setup bat top. I just wish he puts in a thread next time so it doesn't get fucked over time. Uh, my setup is a 8mm shaft with a 14.7 actuator. Uh, personally, that is my favorite one to play on. It's like super good for me, especially for my play style. Uh, there's almost zero wobble on this none of that cdp limp dick action 
none of that shit. Uh, the lever looks beautiful, just the black shaft and the white bat top. Very hard to beat. Uh, look, would look nice in any setup. Uh, the QCFs and DP motions on this like feel really good. You won't mix them up. All right, the tension is perfect for me. It's not too tough. It's not too soft. It's just right in the middle, but you know, a little bit more than the Crown 35 is what I would say. So I actually interviewed Core Jam about the levers and the process on making it. Uh, but it was in text form, so I will read it out to you guys. So, firstly, I asked him, what made you want to design your own levers? He says, at the beginning, I just wanted to use my own custom lever, so I just modded a 303 to use it. A lot, a lot of people were wondering what kind of lever I am using at that time, so I decided to sell some levers. Then I found some problem with the 303 housing, so that made me think of machining stuff, which is about how the V2 came to fruition. What character do you think the Core Jam V2 is best for and why? He says, I think it works pretty well with all characters. I mainly use Mishimas and Akuma. How hard was the process of manufacturing the levers? It was hard. It almost took me half a year to find a good factory, but many people supported me to do it after I found it. Will there ever be a V3 in the future? And what should we expect? He says, I'm not sure for V3, but I will keep making some parts of the levers or just upgrade them. Lastly, please give a message for your fans who have purchased a lever and for those who are still looking to purchase one. He says, thank you for buying my lever. It costs a lot, but I can strongly say that it would help you to input more perfectly. Thanks to Korjan for answering our questions. It was very nice of him to give us a few minutes of his time. So that concludes our Core Jam V2 lever review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for it taking this long. It was actually supposed to come out two weeks earlier, but I really had trouble editing. Uh, my PC really can't handle it anymore, but you know, I'm still doing my best. Uh, more videos hopefully coming soon. Hope everyone is staying safe during these trying times. Uh, let's stay home for now so we can get back to our locals faster. Peace out.